Hello, I'm Nathan Judah. I'm here with the greatest Walsall reporter since Mr. Joe Massey, Mr. Liam Keane. Uh, Liam, Walsall won, Stevenage won. Ah, we're here, we're here again. We're here again. Frustrating. That is a frustrating result. Albeit they scored at the end, but they have got to be winning games like that, surely. It's Groundhog Day, isn't it? Um, Good movie. <laughs> yeah, I've uh, never seen it. Um, Walsall have dominated possession, yeah. particularly first half. Well, I mean, in both halves, but go first half first of all. They dominate possession. They've had four, five, six, seven half chances. Uh, nothing really clear. They, they've got to the byline, they've got to the edge of the box, and they've had the final pass or the final... I don't know whatever it is to create something, and they, sure. haven't, and they haven't done it. Yeah. Um, but they should have been ahead. They they were playing. Bear in mind, Stevenage looked really poor first mm. time. Oh, they were there. They, for the they, take, they yeah. looked really poor. And I, I said the same thing with South End, and they did. But Stevenage looked even worse. They looked worse than South End. They were really poor first half. But Warsaw were dominating it without being exciting really. They were, the, they were half chances weren't they? Yeah, they, they, they were getting into that final third but not really doing enough with it. They, they should have done more, they should have created more uh, and they should have finished more. I mean I don't know what else really I can say <laughs> yeah. with it. It's, uh, it's the same it's, thing it's, again it's, and it's, again. It's, it's the same it? thing every week but that is less of an issue than the second half is because the first half despite the fact they haven't scored they have still played relatively well. Sure. Second half they've gone in and in the first five minutes it's, I mean, I'm, sure you, I'm sure you're about to ask me about it anyway. Yeah. I mean, that no, I might as well go for it. Yeah, yeah. The back pass and the penalty that came from it was exceptionally poor. Osadibi, who I've defended a few times because I think he's got talent, but I think if I'm being deadly honest, I think the last few games he hasn't taken his opportunity. Yeah, he poor night tonight. Yeah. Uh, he was poor tonight, I found. Uh, he has dilly dally with the ball on the edge of his box. He's turning in as, inside and out. And then he hasn't even looked, and he just passed it back yeah. towards Rose. I mean, you have, bearing in mind that this this whole situation came from a set piece that uh, Steenu just trying to trying to score from. Yeah. They've got players in, in and around the box. Sure. Don't just don't look and just kick it in towards Rose. And just it, it's for me, it looked like he was just giving up responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. Personally, the responsibility he's passing it to someone else, and it's it's out of out of the way. It's a poor pass. It's short, uh, and then Rose comes out and. Although he's been forced into it yeah. by Oscar Davies' pass, yeah. he, he, he can't go to ground and take no. him out there because no. Pet is not going anywhere near goal. He's running away from goal, and it was for me, it was just a, a poor mistake. And then from there, Stevens didn't really threaten. They had a couple of shots from Carter. Um, Newton was making a little, making himself a bit of a presence, but not really creating much. Um, and then Walsall had so much of the ball and just hoofed it long every time. And then there's. There's changing it and there's changing it. Uh, uh, my, yeah. my first in 25 years of, of doing football, a quadruple substitution. Uh, and look at paying dividends. The most important, I guess, well, you know, the story of the game, you know, even beforehand, was seeing Josh Gordon back on the bench. Mm. Uh, came on probably earlier than he thought he would have done. Mm. And uh, I thought it looked really, really good. And of course, if anyone was going to score and score a penalty, that's the man you want over the ball. Yeah, I think so. And. Um, I Darrell, is, he's done this at times as well. I think of last season at home to Darlington, FA Cup, they were struggling. 22nd minute, he made two subs. He likes to, when necessary, try and make a bit of a statement, and I felt that's what the four subs were. Um, to be honest, they needed them because yeah. they weren't. They yeah. didn't make a good start to the half at all. Um, it was long balls, it was hopeless punts up field, there was, no, there was no creativity. They missed Rory Holden, yeah. uh, if I was to give them at least one excuse to use. Um, and then the changes came, and uh, Lavery was a change you'd expect anyway. Mm -hmm. um, Guthrie was probably a change you'd expect at some point in the game, uh, although I thought Alfred Bates actually did quite well. Um, Jack Nolan's had a few chances recently, and uh, he, he did okay, he didn't mm -hmm. do nothing special, but better than what he did earlier in the season. Um, and I thought Josh did uh, reasonably well. He came on, he put himself about. Yeah. Um, speaking to him after the game there, he's he still got some fitness to work on of course, and, of course. and confidence to work on. But he, you know, he, he put himself about. He, 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 he He's a trier, Josh. He always yeah. he always gives his all, um, even when he comes back. I thought he was moving quite well, though. Yeah, he, he, know, he, he looked fine. Side, he, he, there was, yeah, he didn't look like there was any injury issues. Obviously, bear him, hasn't the reasoning played. But we asked him just then if he was surprised that he came on for half an hour. And yeah. He said he was, but he's um, <laughs> he's got to go with the, the manager's decision. I think, and he was so happy to be back on the pitch. Yeah. And it was the story, really, that he was going to get he was going to get the uh, a goal, get something that 
and gave Russell some points. And smashed it, by the way. Yeah, I, I think I wrote clips the crossbar, but I think you said it. <laughs> it, 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 it took a little bit more than clipping. I think but... what, you, what your words were to me were, it took a fair chunk of the crossbar. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was, I was a little bit worried about it being a, uh, a reoccurrence of Osadi. Uh, sorry, yeah, Emmanuel. Uh, Adebayo's, Adebayo's penalty, Adebayo, if I get yeah, the name right. Yeah. Adebayo's penalty of the week. Um, so yeah, um, it's good. It's good for confidence. It's good to get him. It's good to finish on, on a on a positive note. You know, there were other opportunities. There yeah. were a couple of penalty shouts. Uh, you've yeah. seen them. You've seen the replays of them. Yeah. So uh, there was two with Norman in the space of about ten minutes. The uh, the first one was difficult to see from the angle we were at because of how far away the press box is. Uh, but someone on Twitter sent me a replay, and for me that looks a penalty. Mm. Um, on the ball is going out of play, uh, or, or at least toward in that direction. The, and the player, as Norman's taken an extra touch towards the byline, the player has stepped into him and just barged him off the ball, hasn't touched the ball. The ball, you can see the, tra the, the travel of the ball as it goes off the field. Yeah. So for me, that's a penalty. The second one I actually have missed and haven't seen a replay yet, but I did speak to some of the other journalists there and, uh, and they said that essentially Norman was knocked off the ball, I think either in the air or as the ball was coming down, one of the two. Uh, and they said it would have been a foul if it was anywhere else on the pitch. So there's two chances there that potentially should have been penalties one I think was definitely because I've seen it uh, but, but, but yeah, the fact, these the fact, things happen don't they in football they, they do but the fact of the matter is is that we shouldn't be clutching it ifs and maybes in, in this game because this game should have been put to bed definitely uh, bearing in mind how poor Seamage were first half but you just look at the, the teams on paper Warsaw are a better side yeah. than Stevenage it might be frustrating for fans to even hear that because they're not exactly that <laughs> exciting at the moment Warsaw but they are a better side than Stevenage, and they should be beating Stevenage. Mm -hmm. um, now, some people won't won't agree and say, well, "Look, we, we, there's no God-given right to beat any team." But um, you just look at that first half. Warsaw dominated the ball and dominated the half chances without actually doing much. Mm -hmm. They didn't actually create that much, particularly anything that was <laughs> anything particularly dangerous. And Stevenage were just flat. They, they, yeah. they were boring. They, they weren't very good. Their goal came from a mistake. Um, but you have to beat these teams. You have to beat them with the ball at your feet and, 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 and making uh, and making phases of play. I mean, look at Norman and, and Jules in that first half. They were bombing on and got yeah. some really good crosses. Yeah. In. The, now that, that's as much as they can do is get the good crosses in. They've got to wait for. They've got to have someone in there to finish it. And and there have been times where the delivery's been poor. But particularly today, Jules put in three, four, five in a row yeah. crosses that yeah. were perfect. Yeah. And you just need someone to nod them in or bring the ball down, lay it off to someone, bottom corner. It sounds easy, I know. I, I, I don't want to. Don't want to make it sound like it's, it should be. It, like the, like the players aren't trying or anything like that. It sounds easy from when, when I say it like that, but they they, they, are, they are creating chances that they should be doing better with. Well, look, if they want to go up this year, they're going to have to start putting chances away. And you know, it's, it's, I think it's fine to be critical. You know, they, we've said it before. The sides have plenty of time together, and they've got to start, you know, producing performances and, and winning home games, uh, especially these, these these kind of games. I mean, here against Southend as well. So I think that that's fair to say. I don't think you've been critical. I think you've been very fair. Actually, uh, one thing's for certain, Liam, is they're going to have to play a damn side better against Tranmere. Um, can, yes. can I mean Tranmere obviously flying out? I think they're just outside the playoffs at the moment, but a good side. Can you expect to see quite a few changes with some of the players that we saw come on tonight? Do, uh, is it too soon for for Josh Gunderfield to start a game? Because it'd be great to see Elijah and, and Josh kind of form that partnership that we saw just before he got injured. Or, or maybe we might do. What, do you, what would you say? What would you suspect? Yeah, uh, yeah. Tranmere, what well, they made a. a man Manager or change early on, they started poorly. I think they're five wins in a row now, I think, as they won yeah, 1 0 yeah. last night. So, yeah, they're doing very well. It's going to be in front of 2,000 fans, which will be nice for me personally to be back in a stadium with fans. I'm sure the players, even though it's away, yeah, will yeah. probably enjoy it. Yeah. Um, but obviously, you want the fans here and, and Tramio are playing well. But yeah, with Josh, I would, I would imagine it's probably a bit too early, to be honest. Um, Darryl, I've asked him there, Daryl said he needs a bit of time still. Uh, Josh is aware of that himself, said it himself. Um, but Darryl has sprung surprises on us with starting 11s before. I mean, he, he, he might do it. Yeah. I, I don't know. Um, if I'm being honest, I would say it's a bit early. Give him a few minutes here and there uh, off the bench and, and, and build not just the fitness, but also the confidence was a big thing, which is what Josh has said to us there. He's got to build the confidence to go into tackles again wholeheartedly here, yeah. like, like he yeah. used to. So, uh, so, yeah, but I agree with you. The, the, partnership with Adebayo was doing really well until the point where Josh was, uh, was injured and also it allows them to play 4-2-3-1 because Josh is, aside from Jack Nolan who's obviously coming through, mm. but Josh is the only senior player they've got who can play right wing 
and play it to at least a pretty good standard. Yeah. Um, they haven't got a natural right winger in the squad, as I said, apart from, mm -hmm. from Nolan, who's young. So um, with him back in, it allows them to play 4-2-3-1, put Roy Holden into the middle, uh, in behind the striker. And they, that's where they looked their best this season, up until Josh's injury, it was 4-2-3-1. Yeah. Um, I think I said 4-5 one second second. I meant 4-2-3-1. Um, so, so yeah, it, 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 he's, he's integral to this team. Get him back in, get him fit, get him starting games again in the next few weeks, hopefully. Um, and hopefully the fortunes return. Yeah, fingers crossed to get a win on the board. It is. Also, once Stephen is one, I'm going to go home and warm these warm these little little mittens, these little bad boys that uh, we've been uh, modelling tonight. Nice. For all the post-match reaction, make sure you log on to expressandstar.com.